Mm -hmm. Hello my beloved siblings in Christ. It is I, your brother Joe Amato. Welcome to my channel once again. Pour out your spirit. This message is entitled, Dance in Your Valley. When the Lord started stirring this message in my spirit, it came to me as a prophetic utterance. In other words, I believe that the Holy Spirit wants to say something very timely to us all. A valley is synonymous with a hard place, or a time of humbling, trial, or tribulation, whereas a mountaintop would be the opposite, good times, victory, abundance, and exaltation. God wants to see our faith, our trust in Him, especially in our valley experiences, beloved. Faith is how we please God. Faith is how we obtain every promise that God has made to us. It takes great faith to dance in our valleys, but God is calling us to do that today. However, when we are aware of certain truths, we understand the importance of demonstrating the amount of faith that it takes to rejoice in the hardest places in our lives and the most difficult situations that we may feel are even hopeless at times. The first truth that we must remember is that the Lord is with us through it all. David declared in Psalm 23 verse 4, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Secondly, remember that with God, the humble are exalted, and those that are exalted will be humbled. In Isaiah chapter 40 verses 4 and 5, God promised that every valley shall be ex exalted and every mountain and hill brought low. The crooked places shall be made straight and the rough places smooth. The glory of the Lord shall be revealed and all flesh shall see it together for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Hallelujah. Matthew chapter 5 verses 10 through, th through 12 reminds us, Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when they revile and persecute you and say all kinds of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven, for so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Are you slipping on those dancing shoes yet? Have you begun tying up those laces? That persecution that you are going through is proof that you are poised to gain a kingdom. That gossip and slander being made against you is only adding to your heavenly treasure. As you are stomped down lower and lower by situations in life and cruel people around you, God is adding honor to your account, where you'll enjoy it forevermore. Thirdly, remember that resurrection power belongs to the Lord. Therefore, even death is not a problem that is difficult for our God, with whom all things are possible. Praise the Lord. In Ezekiel chapter 37, verses 1 through 14, God raises an army back to life, from only dry bones. I strongly urge you to read that text on your own as I'm sure that it will encourage you. Furthermore, on point three, resurrection power is yours today. When Lazarus fell ill, Jesus tarried where he was and in Mary and Martha's mind, he came too late. Perhaps he raised a couple of kids to life who were only dead a couple of minutes or maybe an hour or two. But a grown man who laid in a tomb for four days, the body decomposing, surely their brother's body was as empty as their levels of faith in that moment. In John chapter 11 verses 23 through 25, Jesus said to Martha, your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. 
Why do we have faith for another day, some future date, but not this day? Hebrews chapter 13 verse 8 asserts Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Praise the Lord. The Jesus, the word that aided in the creation of the cosmos, is the same Jesus who died on the cross for your and my sins. It's the same Jesus that sits exalted at God the Father's right hand, making intercession for you and me at this very moment, beloved. He has not lost one iota of his power through the centuries, not one bit of his abilities, not one bit of his strength, etc., etc., etc. In fact, Romans 8, chapter 11 reminds us, But if the Spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, that's the Holy Spirit, beloved, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his Spirit who dwells in you. Beloved, we are destined for resurrection life. 1 Peter chapter 1 verses 3 through 7 declares, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled and that does not fade away, reserved in heaven for you who are kept by the power of God through faith for salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while, if need be, you have been grieved by various trials, that's the valley, and that the genuineness of your faith, being much more precious than gold that perishes, though it is tested by fire, may be found to praise, honor, and glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Fourthly, God is using the valley to equip you for victory and mountain living. That's where you're destined, beloved. That's where I'm destined for the mountaintop. I would like to speak with you now about the eight gets of getting equipped eight gets. They are get saved, get going, get under the Holy Spirit, get in the Word, get to a place of waiting on God, get under good leadership, and get to using your gifts. As I, discussed e as I discuss each get, consider how each involves the Lord equipping you and how each moves you from the valley to the mountaintop. Get number one, get saved, which is also get under his blood. Hebrews chapter 13 verses 20 and 21 say, Now may the God of peace, who brought up our Lord Jesus from the dead, the great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you complete in every good work to do his will, working in you what is well pleasing in his sight through Christ Jesus, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. I like how this reads in the NIV. For verse 21 it says, Equip you with every good, for do, with everything good rather, for doing his will. And may he work in us what is pleasing to him. Get number two is get going on your excellent start with him, with our Lord. 2 Peter chapter 1 verses 3 through 11 insist his divine power has been give, has given us everything we need for a godly life through our knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and goodness through these he has given us his very great and precious promises so that through them you may participate in the divine nature having escaped the corruption in the world caused by evil desires. For this very reason, make every effort to add to your faith goodness. This is part of the equipping, equipping beloved. 
Add to your faith goodness. Add to goodness knowledge. Add to knowledge self-control. And to self-control perseverance. And to perseverance godliness. And to godliness <clears throat> mutual affection. And to mutual affection love. For if you possess these qualities in increasing measure, they will keep you from being ineffective and unproductive in your knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But whoever does not have them is nearsighted and blind, forgetting that they have been cleansed from their past sins. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, make every effort to confirm your calling and election. For if you do these things, you will never stumble and you will receive a rich welcome into the eternal kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Get number three, get under the tutelage of the Holy Spirit. Philippians chapter 2, the end of verse 12 and verse 13, tells us to continue to work out your salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God who works in you to will and to act in order to fulfill his good purposes. His Holy Spirit in you is sanctifying you. Don't stand in the way of that process, beloved. Let God do His work, His wonderful work in you. Get number four. Get in the Word of God. 2 Timothy 3 verses 16 and 17 teaches us that all Scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness so that the servant of God may be thoroughly, what? Equipped for every good work. Get number five, get to a place of waiting on God. And in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, 4 through 7, Paul shares, I will always thank my God for you because of his grace given you in Christ Jesus. For in him you have been enriched in every way, and some versions say equipped there, with all kinds of speech and with all knowledge, God thus confirming our testimony about Christ among you, therefore you do not lack, lack any spiritual gift, you are thoroughly equipped, that means beloved, as you eagerly await for our Lord Jesus Christ to be revealed. Get number six, get under good leadership, especially if you are called to serve. Ephesians chapter 4 verses 11 through 13 reveals, So Christ himself gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors, and teachers to what? To equip his people for works of service, so that the body of Christ may be built up, until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, attaining to the full measure of of the fullness of Christ. <clears throat> get number seven, get to a place of using your gifts. First Peter chapter four verse ten tells us each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. Finally get number eight, getting equipped and getting ready for that mountaintop experience to get you out of that valley, get changed into something different than what you started as, because deer feet work best on mountaintops. Habakkuk 3 verses 18 through 19 reads, Yet I will rejoice in the Lord, I will joy in the God of my salvation, the Lord God is my strength, he will make my feet like deer's feet, and he will make me walk on my high hills. High place or high places comes from the Hebrew Bama and the plural Bamoth, Bamoth or Bamoth. In a biblical context, it always means places of worship. What better thing to do once we arrive at the mountaintop than to continue our worship, the dance that we began in the valley? Jesus often went up to a mountain to pray showing us that he always sought to learn the will of the Father so that he could then do it. Jesus confirmed this in John chapter 5, verse, verses 19 through 21, saying, Very truly I tell you, 
The son can do nothing by himself. He can only do what he sees his father doing, because whatever the father does, the son also does. For the father loves the son and shows him all he does. Yes, he will show him even greater works than these, so that you will be amazed. For just as the father raises the dead and gives them life, even so the son gives life to whom he is pleased to give it. Yes, Christ has been equipping us for mountain living, beloved. But we may still be in that valley. Are you still in the valley, beloved? And when we look at ourselves and, the, and our progress or the lack thereof, we may get discouraged and disappointed. Never fear. Remember that God speaks to you. He speaks to the you, rather, that he intends to make out of you. Not the mess he found you in, and not the half-fixed you, found anywhere in the middle, such as where you may be right now, beloved. Think of Abram, who God called a father of a great nation, before the old man even had his first child. Romans chapter 4, verses 16 through 25 describes it beautifully. Therefore the promise comes by faith, so that it may be by grace, and may be guaranteed to all Abraham's offspring, not only to those who are of the law, but also to those who have the faith of Abraham. He is the father of us all. As it is written, I have made you a father of many nations. He is our father in the sight of God, in whom he believed. And God who gives life to the dead, and calls into being things that were not. Praise the Lord. Against all hope, Abraham in hope believed, and so became the father of many nations. Just as it has been said to him, so shall your offspring be. Without weakening in his faith, he faced the fact that his body was as good as dead, since he was about a hundred years old and that Sarah's womb was also dead. Yet he did not waver through unbelief regarding the promise of God, but was strengthened in his faith and gave glory to God, being fully persuaded that God had power to do what he promised. This is why it was credited to him as righteousness. The words it was credited to him were written not for him alone, but also for us, to whom God will credit righteousness for us who believe in him, who raised Jesus our Lord from the dead. He was delivered over to death for our sins and was raised to life for our justification. Are you dancing yet, beloved? You will be, if like Abraham, you will hope against hope. You will look to the living God instead of the death all around you, and within you. You will take God at his word because you have absolutely no reason to doubt him considering his track record that he has never failed. Think about Gideon who God called with the words the Lord is with you you mighty man of valor when he was probably shaking in his boots or sandals as he declared that he was from the weakest clan and the weakest tribe. Good news. God's not looking for your pedigree, beloved. He's looking for your I'm ready. I'm ready to put aside my ego and my pride. My, 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 my. And let you, 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 God, move through this vessel. Shift that focus from yourself to the living God. I'm ready to let God be God. I'll be the servant. I'm ready for a supernatural, Holy Spirit-powered revival. It happens when my no changes to yes. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. From the bottom of my heart, as the song goes, to the depths of my soul, yes, Lord. Completely yes. My soul says yes. Let's get to that place, beloved. This is not where I want to stay. This is not what he's destined for me. 
but I will dance in this valley. I will demonstrate my faith in my God who will get me to that mountain top in his good time. I will follow the directive of Philippians 4 4 which says rejoice in the Lord always again I say rejoice and 1st Thessalonians 5 16 which also confirms rejoice always not just when I carve out an extra minute here or there not just in the good times when I feel like I'm on top of the world brother how would we respond if God conducted with us the kind of relationships that we often conduct with him. When we forget to be grateful about the good, but we blame him and complain about the bad. Sister, how can we run to him so quickly when trouble comes our way, yet to find fun times and activities and pursuits that lead us furthest away from his will and his ways? 2 Corinthians chapter 13 verses 11 through 14 gives us a better idea of what our Lord is looking for from us. Finally, brothers and sisters, rejoice. Strive for full restoration. Encourage one another. Be of one mind. And I believe he's saying there the mind of Christ. Live in peace. And the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All God's people here send their greetings. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let's also do as the psalmist proposes in Psalm 149 verses 2 to 4 and in Psalm 150. Let Israel rejoice in their maker. Let the children of Zion be joyful in their king. Let them praise his name with the dance. Let them sing praises to him with the timbrel and the harp, for the Lord takes pleasure in his people. He will beautify the humble, those in the valley, with salvation. Praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty firmament. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with the lute and the harp. Praise him with the timbrel and dance. Praise him with stringed instruments and flutes. Praise him with loud cymbals. Praise him with clashing cymbals. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. To those like Abram out there, I speak to you. Start signing your name with a few extra letters. In fact, you are adding an H and an A. Because God will give you your Ha! The final laugh. By that cradle, the baby's on the way. Gideons, I speak to you. Tell the people to pack up. They'll be leaving those cramped den and caves and reclaiming the land that is theirs by heaven's decree. The plundering will stop in the mighty name of Jesus. Are you ready to take back what's been stolen from you, beloved? Are you ready to reclaim everyone of God's promises and the future that he has ordained for you. Show him the faith of Abraham, your father, and the obedience of Gideon, beloved. Believe against your view of yourself. Believe against your current state that you find yourself in, that valley. Hope against hope. Have faith in the faithful God. Don't wait for the mountaintop to celebrate. Believe enough to dance in your valley right now. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Let's pray, beloved. Oh, hallelujah, Lord. Father, we thank you for your word. Father God, you are everywhere. I remember David saying that even if he went to Sheol, even if he went to hell, you are there. Father God, you hear every prayer. You see every tear dropping from our eyes. Father, the hard place was even designed for our good. Think of Jesus who suffered great things, but he obtained a crown that is higher than any other crown. And Father God, you have a crown for our crosses. 
You have a mountain top for our valleys. Encourage my brother or my sister who is watching right now that they are in the very palm of your hands and you will keep them. Jesus, you said that you have not lost any that were given to you. We know there was one son of perdition, but Lord, we are yours and we are in the palm of your hand. You love us today. Let that love of God permeate for my brother and sister who is watching right now. Let them receive it, Lord. It's so real, O oh God. From before Calvary, from before the foundation of the world, you destined to provide a way for sinners such as me to become a part of your family, not only to be forgiven, but to be embraced wholeheartedly. Be embraced, beloved, right now by the loving arms of your Creator, your Savior, your mighty, mighty God, who loves you with an everlasting love. Praise the Lord. Thank you, God, for these things. My Father, in Jesus' name, amen. Oh, my beloved, praise the Lord. Beloved, our faithful God loves you. Do not doubt that for one minute. And I love you too. Please like, subscribe, and share this video and my channel with anyone who you think would be blessed by it today. I ask that you would pray about sending me a love offering, as I do have need, as we all do. But ask the Lord, or pray for me, which to me is just as important as anything that you can send. Keep me in your prayers that I would be in the center of God's will for my life, and I pray the same for you. In Jesus' name, the most important thing, she would be in the center of his will, whether you're in the valley or on the mountaintop. Whatever he's designed for you is good for you, and he's working in you and through you. Have confidence in him, my beloved. Now let's pray the prayer that I always pray at the end. Lord, and it's not just the saying, we truly ask you, Lord, pour out your spirit afresh. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. I'd like to leave you with a parting scripture. It's found in 1 Peter chapter 4, verses 12 through 19. And it reads, Beloved, do not think it strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you, as though some strange thing has happened to you. But rejoice to the extent that you partake in Christ's sufferings, that when his glory is revealed, you may also be glad with exceeding joy. For you are reproached for the name of Christ. Blessed are you for the spirit of glory and of God rest upon you. On their part he is blasphemed, but on your part he is glorified. But let none of you suffer as a murderer, a thief, an evildoer, or as a busybody in other people's matters. Yet if anyone suffers as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God in this matter. For the time has come for judgment to begin at the house of God. This is a prophetic word that I've heard from many modern day prophets, and I believe it, beloved. God is judging his house. God is weeding out the tares. And God will use the wheat. Thank you, Lord. And if it begins with us first, what will be the end of those who do not obey the gospel of God? Now, if the righteous one is scarcely saved, where will the ungodly and the sinners appear? Therefore, let those who suffer according to the will of God commit their souls to him in doing good as to a faithful creator. That fiery trial that may seem strange is your valley, beloved. If you identify with Christ's valleys, you will gain his mountaintops. Remember, crosses become crowns, valleys become mountaintops when the Lord is involved. We are no longer in that sin, shame, sickness, death cycle. That's how it repeats. Sin, shame, sickness, death. 
but when we suffer, we suffer for Christ's sake. This valley that we are all in is a refiner's fire. The Lord has turned up the heat, beloved. Can you feel it? To purify his gold, that's you, and to burn away the dross. He will judge the false wolves in sheep's clothing amongst us. And as the dross rises in our own lives, let's give it to him. Let him take you through this valley. We're headed to the mountaintop, beloved. Rejoice. God bless you, my friend. Until next time, bye-bye for now.